Okay, so before I get started on showing you how to do this, the main part of this, which is super, super easy. So I'm only gonna show you like one set of, one set of two rows, cause it's a two row repeat all the way up. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you, I've already done most of my first pumpkin and I've, I just kind of want to give you a little bit of an understanding of how this is going to work. It's basically just a rectangle that you're making. Mine is not quite where I want it to be yet. It's like, cause you're going to end up folding it in half and making a tube out of it. And my pumpkin, I want it to be a little bit wider. So I have a little bit further to go, but I just wanted to show you some things that is the future. So you can kind of um, plan ahead. One, the yarn, first thing you're gonna need is of course, you're gonna need your main color yarn. So for me, I chose a variegated yarn. This yarn um, used to be huge when I started off, it was big. So it's, I've been using it through the whole thing. Um, I, I, once in a while, I pick out yarn that I love, that I love the colors, but then when I start to use it, I don't like the way it works with anything. I love all of these colors. I love them together, but I don't love them in, anything I've tried to make with them. So I used this as my base, and then I just added um, little pieces of my scraps in with it. And it totally changes, as you can see, totally changes the look as it goes. So um, basically each thing is gonna be made up of one, this is gonna be continuous through the whole thing, and then you're gonna use two other colors with it. Right now I'm using these two colors with it. But you can switch those out for every two rows, right? And just use something completely different. So there, because it's a variegated yarn, it's gonna be changing, ever changing the whole time. But um, this is a great way to get rid of the yarn that you bought and you were like, now what am I gonna do with it? So like for instance, last year, like um, right after Christmas, there was a huge sale at Walmart and I was getting um, Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo yarn for 69 cents a skein. How do you pass that up, right? So I bought a ton, but one of them was this camo yarn. Now I'm not someone who goes around wearing camo all the time, so I'm like, I don't know what to do with it now. I did use it to make the Tunisian, um, I made a Tunisian smock stitch hat or a beanie with it. And this was the inside yarn. And it's cool because it kind of changes colors as it goes, but it's most of the hat is cream colored and this is like the background color. So I think it worked out really well. I like the way it looks. Um, but this I think would be great because doesn't it kind of look like a brand new pumpkin before it changes orange. And then if you like added into it some other pumpkin-y colors, it would be super fun, right? You can do all kinds of like light greens and cream and all kinds of things in there, right? So this I think will be the base color for another pumpkin that I'm gonna make. This one is um, Screams My Daughter. So these are kind of her colors. So I might, she just um, put an offer on a house and so I might make, the, uh, make her a pumpkin for her new house with these colors and then mix in some more, maybe some more Halloween-y. Actually, she's not, her Halloween colors are so different from mine. It's more like turquoise and orange as opposed to, so probably something more like that for her. So um, I'll come up with some cool like scrappy yarns that you can add together with it. And then this one is a totally different look too. There's that. So start off with whatever variegated yarn you like. The other great thing too is that this is a good way, just like with our basket video that I did before, um, this is a great way to get rid of um, not only your scraps, but like your scratchy yarns, your things that aren't gonna feel really good against your skin because this is basically going to be a basket pumpkin. So it's going to be, it doesn't matter if it's scratchy, right? This is going to be a decorative item. Um, another thing that you're going to want is twine because we're going to use that to sew our um, tops together and the bottom together because this is very thick. So we're going to want something a little bit stronger than yarn to pull it together. But also we're going to use this twine as the stem at the top. So it is all going to work together so that it doesn't get pulled out, right? It's going to be really cute. I was inspired by um, a pumpkin that I saw at Hobby Lobby that's actually made out of fabric, but I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I could do that with yarn and kind of get the same look. So, um, so that's what we're doing here. So twine, stitch markers, so that you know where, you know, we're just gonna count our stitches and then you'll know where you're at on that. Um, kind of a bigger tapestry needle because you're gonna use it for the twine too. So use like your bigger one in your set. Um, 
I always have stitch markers. And then of course, scissors. And then I'm just using an H hook, which is a five millimeter. Um, we're gonna be using th um, three pieces of size four acrylic yarn, but honestly, you can use anything you want. It can be, if you're gonna choose to use smaller yarn, then just use extra pieces of it. And it's gonna make it look nice and thick like this. There's gonna be no holes. You won't see the stuffing through it. It's gonna be nice and it'll be really cool looking. Um, one other thing you're gonna really wanna have is some plastic bags. So in this pumpkin, instead of using polyfill, which I might use a little polyfill on the outside just to make it nice and, you know, I, it's not gonna matter because you can't feel, this is thick. This is like a basket, right? So instead of using polyfill, I believe what I'm gonna use is plastic bags to fill the inside. Those are all the things you're gonna need. Gather up all those plastic bags that you've been um, saving and don't know why, and uh, we'll use them for stuffing for this. Um, if you're looking at this and you're like, eek, that's a lot of ends to weave in, we're not gonna weave them in. They're gonna actually become part of the stuffing for the pumpkin, so don't let that stress you out. You can have as many ends as you want, just go willy-nilly on that because we're not gonna need to weave them in at all. They're just gonna hide inside. Um, so, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you how to start on a new one, a new set of pumpkins, but then I'm gonna finish it on this so that you can see um, how we're gonna end this. Um, so then, yeah, so at least you know where to start. We're just gonna do these first two rows and then every, it's gonna, it's gonna be a two row repeat. You're just gonna do the same thing over and over. You're just gonna change colors every two rows and I'll show you how to do that. So let's get started on that. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed some fun, fun colors that I thought my daughter would enjoy on her pumpkin, um, just in her decorative colors. Your pumpkin doesn't have to be orange. You can do anything you want. So, um, and it doesn't even have to, as long as it's shaped like a pumpkin, nobody cares, right? It still looks very fall. So we're going to do these three colors to start off. And then when, once I'm done showing you these two rows, then we'll switch back to my um, one that I already have almost finished. So we're just gonna go ahead and start by chaining 30. So you can chain any number you want. You, you can make your pumpkin wide, you can make it skinny and tall, you can, no pumpkin, no two pumpkins in the world are the same, right? They're all a little different. So um, you don't have to do what I do, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of how it's gonna go. If you, if you space it out into 30 stitches like this one, um, you're gonna have 10 stitches here, 10 stitches in the middle, and 10 stitches on the end. Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do 10 single crochets, 10 half double crochets and 10 single crochets on the first row. On the second row, we're gonna do seven single crochets, three half double crochets until you get to the marker, 10 half double crochets, three half double crochets, and then seven single crochets. The reason I do that is it gives it this sort of punched out look um, so that it kind of has a bubble in the middle like a pumpkin. Go ahead and for me, chain 30. If you want it to be a smaller pumpkin, you could chain something else that's divisible by three. Okay, so that's 30 chains. So what I love about this project, probably my favorite part is just watching the colors change. Not only because of the variegated yarn that you're using for the base, but also every two rows. And I mean, if you look at mine, you'll see that there are no two alike. You can do all kinds of combinations. And even if you think you've used the same combination twice, it still comes out looking differently because of the way the base yarn is variegating. So just a lot of fun to watch. You don't get bored doing this at all. So once you get to the end of your 30 chains, you're gonna chain up one, so a total of 31. Then you're gonna go back into two chains from the hook, so not the one you just chained up one, but this one, and you're gonna go into the back stitch and you're gonna single crochet. So find your back stitch. The way to find it is there's every chain is made up of three sets of stitches and there's, it's gonna be hard at first because there are three yarns that you're working with within each stitch. So you're gonna go down into here. If it's easier, you can go through you can go through that and then back up through here so that you get that bubble on the back. It's just the first one that's hard. They start to kind of, I don't enjoy chaining or crocheting in the chain and that's kind of why. Okay, 
jump over the next one, do the same thing in the back. And that's what's gonna create those ridges. So back loops only, all the way across. When you get to 10 stitches, we're gonna mark it. So three, Oops, four, Okay, so I am at 10 single crochets in the back loops. Um, one thing that I haven't been doing on my pumpkin, but you might wanna do on yours, is mark the first stitch and the last stitch. That way you know where the end is because that chain up is right there and it kinda looks like it could be the last stitch, which would make it seem like you're, I mean, it would make you add stitches basically. and You want it to be nice and straight on the sides. So I marked the first stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the 10th stitch. And then from the 10th stitch to the 20th stitch, we're going to half double crochet, and this is gonna create just kind of a little bit of a bump right there. And as those bumps get bigger, it kind of poofs it out. So half double crochet, still in the back loop. After you get done with this chain, the back loop is so easy to find. It's just this chain that's hard. So wrap it once and then pull through all of that. This is gonna be hard on your hands because you're basically making a basket. So, and as you know, baskets are a little harder to get through, but they're nice and stiff and then there's no holes and it makes for a really cool, textury, baskety looking pumpkin. Once you get a rhythm, it goes a lot faster. This is one of those fun projects that like, it has a little bit of like counting, but not a ton. And it's um, pretty simple. It's, you're basically just making a rectangle and then making a tube out of it and then putting it all together. But um, it's uh, just, just enough of an effort to it that um, it doesn't, you don't get bored. You're not just doing single crochet, single crochet, you know? Okay, so. 10 single crochets, 10 half double crochets. We're gonna go ahead and mark this. And then 10 single crochets, go back to 10 single. And then mark the end so you know where the beginning and the end are. Single crochets for the last 10 stitches. Okay, keep going. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so the first row is finished. Rather than mark the final stitch while I'm there, I'm gonna mark it on the way back just because you'll that way it'll save you from having to move it twice. So you're just going to chain up one, turn it, and you're going to single crochet in the back loop of that first stitch, not the chain one, but the one next to it, right? So back loop only, and you're gonna make sure you go through all of those pieces of yarn, which right now is hard to see because there's two whites and one blue, um, and then single crochet. And this time you're going to, you can go ahead and mark that stitch since it's the, that way you know that that is the last slash first stitch of the row. So, you're just gonna do, instead of 10 single crochets this time, you're gonna do seven. Now, if you are doing, this is the height of your pumpkin, right? So when you are doing this, this is how tall the pumpkin's, it's actually gonna be like that tall because these are gonna scrunch in. Um, and then this is the width of it. So how long you make it will decide how wide your pumpkin is. So think of your pumpkin as like that tall, right? Because it's gonna squish in like that. So you can make it wider, you can make it taller, whatever you want. Just know that when you're doing your, um, your thirds, right? Um, let's say you wanna make it taller. You could make it uh, 45, right? And then it'll be 15 in between. Just do like three stitches before you get to the middle ones and three stitches after you get to the middle ones. And that's how you'll know sort of where to go. So uh, the, uh, hopefully that'll make sense here in a second. So I just did one. We're gonna do six more single crochets. I try to always make it so that you don't have to count. After you set it up, hopefully the counting will not be necessary. 
because you've got stitch markers that are counting it for you. And all you need to know is three stitches before you get to the middle stitch marker, you're going to switch to your half double crochet on the second row. Okay, so there are, four, there are four stitches left before you get to this, seemingly so, right? But really, the end of your 10th stitch is gonna be when you go through here. It's just the way that when you single crochet, that's just how the single crochets work. You're always kind of offset a little bit. So even though this is where it's marked, you'll know that when you get to here, that's when you move the marker, and this is the, actually the 10th stitch. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that. So when you know that it's here, just know that that's gonna jump over here. When we turn around and go the other direction, it'll jump back this way. It'll just go back and forth, um, and it'll always kind of be in the right spot. So what we're gonna do now is um, three stitches before the end, which is actually, it looks like four stitches before the end, but three stitches before you get to the marker stitch, you're gonna to switch to a half double crochet. And that, the reason why we do it just a little bit offset from the first row is just kind of give it more of a, sort of an organic um, bump there. So it's not like just, so you can't see the ridge. It just kind of blends in. Okay, so that's the end of the 10th stitch, even though the marker's over here. So that's just because the way that single crochet works. So you're gonna take that marker out and move it up here. And then you're gonna do your 10 half double crochets. And that's gonna actually end here, not where the marker is, but the one right before it. And then you'll switch your marker and then you'll do three more half double crochets and then singles the rest of the way. Oops, you don't want to lose your little, when you're working with three pieces of yarn, it's easy to lose one, so kind of keep an eye on that. Notice that I've changed how I hold my hook. Usually I hold it like a pen, but I, when I work on baskets, I change it so it doesn't hurt my wrist and my fingers. Okay, so that's the stitch before the marker, but it is the 10th stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we're gonna move this marker up to here. And then you're gonna go, you're gonna do three more half double crochets and then the rest will be single crochet. I'll meet you at the end. So marking that final stitch is helpful <laughs> because really, I've already done 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, this is the 10th one. So the one that that stitch is in is the 10th one. You might be um, think that this is the last one, but it's actually this one. So just kind of keep that in mind when you do it. So final single crochet. Don't finish this one. So you're going to pull up this, and at the end of the second row is when you're going to change your color scheme. So you're going to keep your variegated yarn, but get rid of the other two that you're working with. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave that one on there. Go ahead and trim these ones off. I'm trying to find something that is more her and less me because I tend to go with the more, there we go. That's probably more her. Actually, that's probably more her. Okay. I tend to go with the more earthy tones and she tends to go with the lighter pinks and greens and blues and things. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your other two, your new two pieces. You're gonna give it a little bit of a tail and then pick up your one that's continuing 
and just kind of like line them up. So like this is, these will match these tails, line it up with this one, and what you're gonna work with is these three pieces of yarn right here. So go ahead and on that, that last part where you're finishing that single crochet, you're gonna pull in your two new colors. And that gives it a nice clean edge on the top there. Okay, so now chain up one, and we're just gonna do a repeat of what we just did. And it's gonna be the first row, if you remember correctly, was three single crochets to the, or sorry, 10 single crochets in the back loop to the marker, the one right before the marker, and then 10, or 10 half double crochets in the back loop to the next marker, and then 10 single crochets. I'll show you, I'm gonna go ahead and do it real quick. So you're chained up one, and now you're gonna go into the back stitch, same stitch that you just came out of. Single crochet, mark it. So you know that that is the end of that row. Okay, and then single crochet back loops, right? So these are, this is what it looks like a little braid going down here. You're gonna pick this set only. Usually when you're crocheting, you're going through the whole braid, but for us, we're gonna go through the back braid and that's what gives gonna give it that um, sort of ridge right there. It's kind of pumpkin-y looking. Look how much that's gonna change the look of that. Even though we're using the same backup or background yarn, just changing the other two colors that's with it changes the look of that row so much. How much faster that goes now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're right before this marker, so you really should never have to count this. I'm just showing you, like, whenever you're the stitch right before the marker, you've already reached ten. So go ahead and switch your marker. And then switch to half double crochets. Okay, so the one right before, oops, spoke too soon. So when you reach the stitch right before the marker, you're gonna take the marker out, switch it over, and then continue on with single crochets to the end. And that's all you're gonna do. You're just gonna keep going those two rows two rows, two rows, in, and then change your color scheme every two rows. And it'll create this really cool ridge right here that um, when you put it together is going to look very sort of three-dimensional and pumpkin-y in its look. And you can actually, this is with the ridge in the middle, you could actually choose to have the ridge at the end of the color. Um, I haven't decided yet what I like better. I think I might like it better at the end of the color. Um, so. That'll be up to you when you get to that part. But um, for now, just keep going back and forth, make it as wide as you want, have fun with your color schemes, like chain, you can use all of your scrap yarn in here and just um, make it a rainbow if you want to. Or you can use a specific color scheme like I'm doing for my daughter. Um, I will meet you when you get it to as wide as you want it to be. So just keep going and going and going until it looks about what, how you want your pumpkin to be, just know that this part right here is not gonna be sticking up, it's actually gonna be pulled in tight, and it's gonna get, so it's gonna, that's gonna make it shorter. Okay, so we've come to the end. Um, I have 50 rows. That was not my intention, it just kind of is how it turned out, but um, you will, if you did it right, you will actually have an even number of rows no matter what you do. So if, because there's obviously two rows for every repeat, right? So when you get to the end, you want to combine your two pieces together so that this ridge 
is not, you don't want the ridge to go, how do I say this? See how the ridge is in the middle there? If you combine these together on this side, you're gonna have three ridges in a row and it won't look right, where this is a ridge and then a divot and a ridge and a divot. So you want there to be a ridge and a divot. So in order for there to be a divot, you gotta put the seam on the other side, right? So that's what we're gonna do. The seam that I've chosen to do is kind of big and bulky, but it looks better on the outside that, than the other seam that I was thinking about doing. So we're going to just kind of go with it and know that this big bulky seam is going to be on the inside of your pumpkin so you won't even know or care. It might even give it a little bit of stability. I have a little bit of a, oops, I kind of missed a yarn there at the very beginning, so I'm gonna pull that in um, to fix it. So I chained one at the end of my row, my last row. Now you're gonna go under both of these stitches. So don't go in the chain one, go into the, the last stitch there go under both of the loops of the last stitch on the row, this row, actually, the first stitch on this row. And then you're going to wrap it, pull through that, pull through that, and then you're gonna slip stitch into those, just like that. Um, same thing, just keep doing that. I'm gonna fix this little uh-oh that I did by just pulling that little loop in there as I go through all of those. So pull through all those and then go through that. Um, there is a way that you can actually make this seam less bulky, but it doesn't look as good on the front side of the pumpkin. Believe me, I don't like this bulky seam, but um, because of the way the colors lay on the other side, it just kind of looks funky. So um, I'm just gonna go with this and then that way, you're not gonna see it anyway, because it's on the inside. Okay, so just keep doing that. See how thick that seam is? That's what I don't like. But what it does is it creates a seam on this side that is, you can't tell where the seam is. It, it matches all the other divots. So that's what we're going for. We want it to look perfect on the other side. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing this all the way to the end, meet me there. Okay, so I've come down to the end of this join right here. Um, just before you end it, you might wanna take a look at what the inside looks like and make sure you like it, which I do love it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do an extra slip stitch just to knot it. And then if you've seen my other pumpkin video from last year, um, this is very similar. I mean, it's basically the same design as the pumpkins that I did on there, the little amigurumi pumpkins. Um, it's just bigger and it's baskety and we're using a lot more yarn in it. So we're about to go into territory that I haven't gone into before. Usually I would leave a long tail here and that tail would be what we sew this part in and we'll go around and sew this part in. But we're gonna do something a little different because I want the um, top of the pumpkin to be basically like a bunch of pieces of twine. We're gonna leave these out because this is actually the inside of the pumpkin. And we're, so we're gonna sew in our, sew around the edge, pull it together, leave these, and then we're gonna turn it right side out. So go ahead and grab your big, as big a tapestry needle as you can get your hands on to put this in. Luckily they're pretty easy to thread, she says, and then it's not. Kind of pull it to the middle. I am winging it right now, you guys, in case you didn't know. This is just, I am going off of, I was inspired by this little pumpkin at Hobby Lobby. So I, this is what's, it's gonna work in my head. We'll see if it works in real life. So I'm gonna start right here where the seam is cause that's just an easy spot to start. I'm gonna pick the spot that is like the least thick there and I'm gonna go in between there, okay? Then we're going to pick the spot that is the least thick on that side and so forth and so on. Just go back and forth. This is like a basting stitch kind of. It's not like, it doesn't have to be a finished stitch. Nobody's gonna see it. And then you're just gonna pull your twine through that. But not all the way, leave some there because we're gonna use that. I could leave quite a bit there because that's gonna go up through the middle of the pumpkin. And then just keep going. <laughs> it's so funny when I, 
think something's going to work in my head, and then I'm like, I get that nervousness, like, is it actually going to work? Or are we going to have to redo my whole thought process here? I'm sure you guys have had that too. Okay, so this is a little bit of a struggle because this is a lot of yarn that I have, and that's about as close, closed as I can get it just by pulling these two tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and knot this, and you want this to have an extra amount of um, twine on it so that you can, hopefully we can pull it up to the top and make it part of the um, stem on the top. So we're gonna pull this tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go across and I'm gonna sew that hole shut. Hard to do with all of this yarn kind of in the way, but I think that it'll be better to have all of this on the bottom as opposed to on the top. So grab the other side. If any stray yarn ends up on the right side of the pumpkin, we can always just sew it back through, so don't worry about that part. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going on the other side, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie another knot. So it's gonna pull it together on the bottom. And hopefully that's gonna be enough twine to go to the top. I think it will. And still have a little bit of a stem there. Okay, so. Now we're gonna turn it right side out and I'm probably going to cut this. Okay. Make sure that's nice and tight. I'm gonna pull, put this this way. So hopefully, it's pretty good down there. Okay. Probably not gonna hold water, but. <laughs> It'll, it'll be good. Okay, so now we have this right here. So when we close this top, so I've turned it inside out, that's what the bottom looks like. Pretty, pretty closed up, there's still a hole there. If you wanted to stick something through there, you probably could, but I think it's pretty secure. Um, and then we're gonna fill it with stuff. Now you could fill it with stuffing, if you wanted to, you could fill it with extra yarn bits, which I probably can do that right now because um, I save my yarn bits. You can kind of toss those in there. But um, I'm also gonna use just to, you know, so I'm not using a ton of polyfill in here. I think I'm also gonna use some plastic bags. So this is the first time I've ever done this, but I've heard on other sites that this is a great way to fill things, especially things this thick that don't have to be like soft and lovey, they just have to be Full, um, to use recycled plastic bags. So I'm gonna grab a couple of those and then we'll do the next part. So probably everybody has a bag full of plastic bags, right? Somewhere um, and apparently some receipts too. My husband kind of saves them up for me because I'm like, someday I'm gonna make one of those really big floor poofs and I'm gonna need these for that. Um, but this is like a mini tiny floor poof. Um, same kind of concept, same sort of like thick baskety thing to it. So I'm just gonna use these to kind of fill this in. But you wanted these to stay on the top because this is gonna be part of the stem. So keep, keep a hold of your twine and go ahead and stuff the inside of your pumpkin. Okay, so that's pretty stuffed. Isn't that cute? I'm excited. Okay, so I did the same thing. I cut off another long piece of twine, doubled it up, and we're gonna do the same exact thing up here. Um, I'm gonna try going into the tops of these so that it's a little bit easier to pull it together maybe. So the top bump might be better than trying to pull it together from the inside part. So it's not quite so thick, hopefully. Maybe kind of line it up with that. Oh, give it a little extra because you're gonna be tying knots too. Okay, and then Up, down, 
up. <laughs> okay, I apologize if the sound is gonna be funny on this, but I am now standing above the camera, which is um, going to make things difficult, but it's easier for me. So I pulled it as tight as I can. I'm gonna tie it in a knot. So it doesn't come undone. And since I can tell already that I'm gonna want that stem to be a little bit thicker, I mean, I could just pull this over here to pull that hole. I literally walked away from this project to go get extra bags to put in it, and I came back, and as I was walking back, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. So, I mean, so we're on the right track. I just need to get this um, stem right. So pull those two together so you don't have a hole anymore, and you can tie another knot. Okay, so we have all of this twine to work with. I think I might actually want there to be more twine to work with. So I'm actually gonna sew in a couple more rows. Okay, so you can just kind of like sew this under and back up the other side. So it goes under those knots. Tough, man, you can do it, okay. Pull those through, and then kind of even them out, and then do it again. I'm gonna build this up a little bit. So it looks like a stem on the top of your pumpkin, right? And then we're gonna tie it all together. Okay, so that part's done. I actually ended up having to, that last one, I couldn't get the needle to pull through because there's so many like pieces of twine in there that I actually had to grab one of these like rubber things that you use to keep um, mats from sliding and stuff. I actually use it to open jars, but um, I had to get a hold of it with this so I could pull the needle, otherwise I just kept losing my grip. So um, yeah, I actually had somebody comment um, on one of my um, videos that she felt like I needed to be better at planning out my um, process better ahead of time so that I didn't lose viewers. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's probably not gonna happen because that's just not my process. And I get that that's not for everybody. I get that, you know, some people just, you know, they need to have everything planned out ahead of time. I'm more about the journey. So this is definitely a journey for me, but so far, I think it's gonna work out really cute. Um, so anyway, so the moral of that story is I'll, I'll, it probably won't change, guys. If you need a more um, organized creator, um, I'm probably not the girl for you. But, um, but if you stick with me, we'll probably create some really cool things together. Okay, so I may have gotten a little carried away with adding that in there, but I basically just kept adding basically two pieces at a time until it got thick enough that when you twist it, it looks like an actual pumpkin stem. That is the goal, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna secure it, and I just used a piece of twine and then like a contrasting piece of yarn. Um, in the one, in my one that I saw that I liked, it was actually a, a different color of twine, and you can do that if you want to. Um, and I had different color twine, but I felt like that was unfair because I did not give you a heads up at the beginning that you needed two colors of twine. So we're just gonna use a contrasting piece of yarn and tie a little knot right there. We will weave that in to, in fact, we can do that right now if we want to. And just put this in. So it kind of just hides, just put it underneath here and then stick it up inside here. Okay, so that's just gonna hide in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist this and then we're going to use this to tie it, hopefully. Am I twisting it the right way? Okay, when you get it to about where you want it to be, 
then give yourself some extra. And you're gonna do the same exact thing on the top as you did on the bottom. You're gonna make a, I mean, you can actually crisscross it a little bit if you wanted to. It's kind of cute. And then knot it on the bottom and then thread it up into the top. And then trim the top, which you can make it, you can leave it witchy looking like that if you want to, or you can just kind of, I think I like the fuzziness on top. So we're just gonna kind of leave some extra. Not quite so like frayed, but a little frayed up there. Just like that. Oh my gosh, isn't it fun when you see something in your mind and then you can you kind of just, you're not sure it's gonna happen. Look at all this mess. And then it just kind of comes together. So let's do a quick overview here. That's so fun. And then you can kind of shape them to be whatever you want. And then I'm probably, honestly, I'm probably gonna make a bunch of these because that was fun. Okay, so you can definitely leave this pumpkin just the way it is. My son um, votes for leaving it alone, but I, the original image in my head is that picture of that cute little pumpkin I saw um, at Hobby Lobby and it had a leaf on it. So I'm gonna make just a really quick leaf. You don't have to if you don't want to, but um, it's just gonna be a quick little leaf applique that's gonna look kind of pumpkin-y. It's actually a maple leaf, but um, I think maple leaves and pumpkin leaves look very similar. To start a magic ring, you just wrap it around like you're gonna do a slip stitch. This is how I do all my slip stitch, but instead of pulling this up and then pulling this whole thing tight, you're just gonna leave that there and then do a slip stitch to hold it. And that is the beginning of your ring. Then you're going to do 11 single crochets into the ring. So you're just going around all of that yarn and doing the single crochets into there. The reason we're doing an odd number like that, because usually it'd be like six or 12, like if you're doing a star or something, our leaf is gonna have five little petals or like five leaf parts to it. And there's gonna be a gap at the bottom where you would normally put like a, a stem or something, but we're probably not gonna do the stem. We're just gonna do the gap. Okay, so we have made 11 stitches around. Now I'm gonna pull the magic ring so that it pulls it nice and tight. And then don't worry, I'll show you how to sew that in at the end but you're going to connect your ring just by going over here to the first stitch and doing a slip stitch. If you're not sure if that's the right number of stitches, just double count. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. and then slip stitch, slip stitch that in just like that. We'll pull this tighter later if we want to. I think the original picture actually has a hole in it. So, um, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to chain up two, and then we're going to do a double crochet back in the same exact hole. And then you're going to do two double crochets in every um, stitch around. Okay, so when you finish the round, you should have 22 stitches, right? Double 11. And um, right now I have 20 and this is the last stitch. So we're gonna do two stitches in here, two double crochet. And then you can just jump over here to the first stitch and join it with a slip stitch, just like that. Then what we're gonna do is you're gonna chain up two, and we're gonna do everything for this first like part of the leaf, the first petal, if you will, of the leaf. Um, it's gonna be in the same hole, so there's a lot going on here. So you're gonna do chain up two, you're gonna do one double crochet, and then you're gonna build it higher, and you're gonna do two, I, they're called treble crochets, I call them triples, but you wrap twice, 
And it's just like a double, instead of going through two, you're gonna go through two, two, and two, just like that. Do it again, wrap it twice, go in the same hole, two, oops, two, and two. Okay, so that's one half of that part of the leaf. So then you're going to do a pico, so you're gonna do um, chain three, one, two, three, and then you're gonna come down right here to where this loop and this loop meet, and you're gonna join them together and do a slip stitch right there. And that just kind of gives it a point. Then you're gonna come back down and do the, like this is the first half, so you're gonna do this, the second half the same way, still in the same hole. So you're gonna do another treble, and another treble, and then, just like we did before, we're gonna do two double crochets. So, and we what we did before was we did chain up one and one double crochet, that chain up two counts as the first double crochet. So now we're gonna end off this side of the leaf with two double crochets, still in the same hole. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you make sure that this kind of pull this side and make sure that it's not like coming over on this stitch and you're gonna skip the next stitch, go into this stitch and you're gonna slip stitch to join it right there, okay? Then you're gonna skip the stitch, go into this stitch and do a double crochet, two actually. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing over again. So two doubles Two triples, triples, triples. <laughs> One pico, so chain three, two, three. Come back around where these two meet and then do go into both of those and then slip stitch it to join. And then you're gonna do two triples. and two doubles. Skip that stitch and then go to the next one. Slip stitch to join and then do it all over again. Do it three more times and I'll meet you on the other side. Just do a little slip stitch over here. And then I'm gonna knot it. And I'm gonna put a long tail on it so that I can have a little bit to sew it in with. And we're gonna attach it to our pumpkin right like that. So first though, let's go ahead and weave in this end so it's nice and tight and it doesn't come undone on you. So what you wanna do is take your needle and what I do is I don't like, I'm not a big fan of knots. If you wanna put a knot in here because it makes you feel more secure, then go ahead, by all means, do that. Um, but I like to weave back and forth. So just pull it as tight as you can, and then find a place to weave it that it's um, you're not gonna see it. And I like to weave back and forth like maybe three times in there. Maybe grab something and then go back the way you came. You have to kind of grab a loop so that it doesn't pull right back the <laughs> way you, <laughs> otherwise you're just pulling it right back out. Do the same thing on this side, just grab something and then go back the way you came. 
and um, it would take an awful lot to work that out of there. So um, you are pretty secure. You can do it one more time if you feel like you need to. Or even go the other way if you want to. This little leaf is not gonna be like a hat or anything, so it's not gonna get stretched much. So you don't really need to put a lot of extra effort into that. Okay, so now all you wanna do, and you don't even have to weave the, put the whole leaf on, all you need to do is just attach it, and it can just be loose like that, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Attach it wherever you think looks cutest. I kind of like it the opposite from the where the um, thing is right there, <laughs> my technical term, where the stem um, kind of flips over. And then you're just going to go underneath these little pieces. Pull it tight. Go on that piece. Next one over. Three stitches will probably do it because you just want it to kind of hang there, right? And then you can just make a little knot. and then weave in your ends. And you can either, I'm probably just gonna like pick another spot in the pumpkin to pull that through, and then I'm just gonna weave my ends in in this leaf right here so that it doesn't, so that green doesn't, I mean, <laughs> it'd be really easy to hide it because there's an awful lot of colors in there, but you can just go right through this leaf. And do the same thing, just weave back and forth a few times. Um, I hope you enjoyed doing this. This is super fun for me. Uh, pumpkins and Halloween and harvesty time is my favorite, favorite time of year. It's been weird because today is like, it's like 95 degrees outside. I'm literally walking around in shorts and a tank top, but um, I am ready for fall because I'm just not a summer girl. Okay, so it's very hard to get the whole thing on camera, but it's super cute. I'm gonna take a picture of it and we're gonna finish off this video with a nice little photo so you can see it. Um, I'm gonna do multiple of these in lots of different colors, I think, and I think they're gonna look super cute. So um, I hope you enjoyed um, this video and that it taught you fun things about how to make pumpkins. Um, if you would like to share pictures of your pumpkins, um, I would always love to see those and you can do that on our Facebook group or my Facebook group. It's called Janelle's Quarantine Crochet and we all like to share things there and help each other out and everything so come join us there and um, be sure to leave comments if you have questions and I um, will see you on the next video